Ladies and gentlemen, the CEO of Block One, Brendan Bloomer. Hello, everyone. Uh, we're so glad to have you here. Uh, 90 teams uh, representing over 44 countries. So congratulations to everybody and everything that's built, whether you're up here in the top 10 or not. EO Shield, are you ready? Judges, are you ready? Let's kick off some finalists. You've got three minutes on the clock. Go. Blockchain is terrifying. If you're a small business running a smart contract, you never know who the next person calling your code is going to be. Maybe they're a hacker trying to exploit a weakness in your C++ implementation. Maybe they're a somewhat shady character working for a terrorist organization or an organized crime ring. You don't know who you're engaging with until the moment that code starts to run. And to make matters worse, when it's done running, there's no taking it back. Blockchain is forever. So before you engage in an action, you should know who you're interacting with. AOS Shield is a managed security service distributed on the AOS blockchain that allows developers and users to understand who they're interacting with. The core of AOS Shield isn't some flashy UI. It's a single line of code that every developer could include in a smart contract. It reaches out to our smart contract and queries a reputational database that has a list of known malicious users. These users are ranked based on a kind of CVE score describing the risk involved in interacting with them. So for example, if a user has been known to participate in denial of service attacks or has recently stolen money from another contract, you can have your contract automatically refuse to engage with them and fail the action immediately. AOS Shield provides a layer of security not just for developers, but also for users. We keep track of contracts that are running malware based off of signatures and off of the accounts. So say there's a gambling contract that lies about its odds and says you have a 1 in 10 chance of winning when you really have a 1 in a million. This gets logged in our database. And as an end user, the interaction is simple. You can go to this page, you just type in the account, and you get a judgment straight out of our distributed application that tells you whether or not the account is known to be malicious. So where does this data come from? Well, there are two sources for the information. The first is really something that can only happen with blockchain. We have a reporting mechanism whereby any user who has a problem with a smart contract can say that, and developers can kind of use this report statistic to decide what level of trust they want. There's no centralized authority here. You just query the smart contract, and if there are 1,000 people complaining about an account, maybe you shouldn't interact with that account. Alternatively, and I think this is the coolest part of our application and the best business model, we've also implemented not just a blacklisting system, but a sort of whitelisting system, a security certification system. This replicates what we've seen as a successful business model in the internet world of SSL certificates. This is a multi-billion dollar industry, and a smart contract operator can make money to sustain a smart contract by selling certifications to other developers. A developer can say, I've built code, can you audit it? And then after an audit, it gets added into this list of trusted contracts. Users can then say, I only want to interact with contracts that have been approved. I want to be as safe as possible. Or contracts can say, I only want to interact with users who have proven they have an identity to this trusted third party. Essentially, we bring a scalable source of trust into a trustless environment. Thanks. And time with just a little bit to spare. EO Shield, well done. Well done. No worries, other teams. That's an easy act to follow. <laughs> Judges, I've got two minutes on my clock for any questions you might have. All right, I've got a question for you. If you've got thousands of reports, how do you make sure the reports aren't false? So that is a problem. And I think the way we do that is we have two sources of trust. So there is the kind of hive mentality. A thousand people kind of gang up against a contract and make it look bad. As a developer, you can choose whether you contract, whether you trust the smart contract operator, who could be a trusted third party like NIST, who gives it a score based off of neutral metrics, or if you believe in total anarchy, you can have the downsides of that, or you can take the benefits of centralization, depending on which you think is the most important metric. And what recourse does a user have if there's a mistake in the rating system? So the rating mechanism can have the centralized party decline a rating or choose to ignore it. So for example, you can have the rating say, a bunch of people hate this, but the contract operator can say, we decided this thing is safe. You can even add it to the list of trusted contracts, and a user could petition the contract operator for that moderation. The overwhelming winner of $100,000 and a trip to the grand finale. A warm round of applause, please. Team. EO Shield, come on down!
London. It's been a pleasure. Good night!